Hello friends, this is Brad Apple. I'd like to take just a moment to thank all of you again who have subscribed to the channel and who have watched the videos and, and liked and shared them out there with other folks. I really appreciate that. We're up to 580 subscribers. I think we'd like one subscriber being at 580 as of the making of this video. And uh, if you haven't taken the time yet, please subscribe. I would appreciate that. I wanted to talk to you today about Randall Hilton. And I know many of you out there that have uh, been fans of bluegrass and acoustic music for a number of years are familiar with Randall. But uh, I just thought I'd like to do a tribute video to Randall because uh, he's really written so many great songs in, in bluegrass and acoustic music that I, I think that he needs to be remembered. And uh, for those that are, that are not familiar with Randall's work, maybe this video will help you uh, become familiar with it a little bit and go out there and, and search it out and listen to some of his songs. He left a lot of great songs out there, that, so many that have become just uh, what people would call standards in, in bluegrass music now that are done, and uh, some people may not even know that Randall wrote those songs. But uh, I did a little research, and I wanted to share a little bit about Randall with you today, and I made some notes, uh, so I'll hopefully uh, get all the information correct. Randall was born January the 8th, 1946, in Willis, Virginia. That's close to the town of Floyd, Virginia, and it's in Floyd County. Randall, at an early age, uh, had ambitions to become a country singer, and uh, being that, he, he learned to play the guitar starting at age five, and uh, he started to write songs just about as soon as he started learning to play the guitar. And back in those days, of course, radio was a, a big form of entertainment. People that, that heard music heard it a lot on the radio, like Grand Ole Opry, uh, 6.50 a.m. there, and, and so many of those stations. And Randall heard a lot of that music coming over the Blue Ridge Mountains there where he was living as a, a child. Uh, he would hear people like Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs and Mac Wiseman and uh, Carter and Ralph Stanley. Uh, to name a few. So that was a big influence on Randall early on. And uh, Randall was a really quick study of music and songs. Uh, according to the research I did, Randall, he could hear a song three or four times and pretty well have it memorized. And he developed a large repertoire of, of songs that he could do at an early age, being able to, to memorize them so fast like that. So Randall continued to uh, play and write songs, and uh, then in 1973, he decided to give Nashville a try, and he first thought he was going to go down there and write country songs, you know, but just at the time Randall was leaving, country music was starting to change, you know, it was becoming more pop-oriented at that time, and the more traditional sounds were kind of falling out of favor, so... So around 1976, after giving uh, the country songwriting a, a try there, uh, but like I say, in the changing market at that time, Randall decided to make his focus writing bluegrass songs. And uh, he set up his own publishing company called Greasy Creek Music, and that was named for a creek in Floyd County, Virginia, where Randall was from. And he started writing bluegrass songs and he would go to the major festivals and he would pitch his songs to the the major acts of the day you know and uh he started getting groups to record his songs uh, i know the lewis family recorded some pretty early on uh lester flat recorded uh some of randall's songs also early on uh going on in time in 1984 and 1985 Randall was named the top bluegrass songwriter of the year by uh, SPIGMA. That's the Society for the Preservation of Bluegrass Music in America, SPIGMA. He was named Songwriter of the Year in 84 and 85. And one thing Randall could do was he could take almost any subject and write a song around it. Um, he didn't write just all serious songs. I, I know one of the songs that uh, I like that he wrote is called Over the Counter Drugs. And uh, he was telling the story that he went to the drugstore one day, and I think he said he wrote down 50-something 
names of all these over over the counter drugs that were available. And he made a song about that, and that's pretty neat. You'll have to have to look that one up. But he could take uh, such subjects as uh, bulldozer operators, like I say, drugs, pickup trucks, uh, people that used to search for water in the ground. He did a song called Pulley Bone Gaiden about that subject. And uh, from my research, Randall even wrote a book titled How to Write and Sell Bluegrass Songs. And in that book, he explained where he gets his ideas and how he weaves uh, his craftsmanship into a song. And that's a book I would love to read myself. And uh, unfortunately, it it's doesn't seem to be available anymore. I was hoping maybe it was out there in a download form or something like that or on Amazon, but I can't find it. If any of you know about that book, have a copy of it, would be willing to share. I, I would love to see that, that book. Uh, Randall was inducted into the Blue Ridge Music Hall of Fame in 2022. Uh, much deserved recognition that he got there. And I just wanted to share with you some of Randall's songs here. Um, <clears throat> he wrote a bunch of them. And uh, I went to BMI.com, that's B Broadcast Music Incorporated, uh, a royalty collection company there that collects royalties and stuff. Um, but according to their, their website, Randall was affiliated with BMI. Uh, according to their website, Randall wrote 276 songs that he has registered with them anyway. And I just wanted to write down a few of the songs that I, I, I know I was familiar with. And uh, I'm sure that some of you will recognize some of these songs, but you may not know that Randall Hilton was the one that wrote these songs. So there's Lee Berry Rye. That's the song about the bulldozer operator. Uh, the Bluegrass Cardinals covered that song. There's Country Poor and Country Proud, and that's a beautiful song. I really love that song. I think he did co-write that one with a fellow named Cadillac Holmes, if I'm correct. My Heart is Yours, that's a Doyle Austin and Quicksilver cut that he got there, and actually that's a, he got the title cut on that song. That was the title of one of Doyle's albums, as was this next song, Once and for Always. That was a, a Doyle Austin and Quicksilver album. Uh, that uh, used one of Randall's songs for the title, Cold Sheets of Rain. I bet a lot of you have heard that song. I know the Virginia Squires might have been the one, first ones that come out with that song, and since then, it kind of had a resurgence uh, several years ago. Dream Softly, My Love, Lost and Found, remember that song? The Summer You First Loved Me, Lonesome River Band, uh, I know, did that song. Pulley Bone Gaiden, Bluegrass Cardinals. Over the Counter Drugs, that's the song about him going to the drugstore and writing down all this, the over the counter drugs and making a song about it. Late Night Cry of the Whippoorwill, that's a song Virginia Squires, I know, covered that one, maybe some other ones. Oh, Anita, that's uh, Charlie Waller, I believe, covered that song. Have I Loved You Too Late, that's another song that uh, got recorded on one of Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver's albums. And uh, let's see, The Sky is Weeping, Virginia Squires did that one. And Longing for the Southland, Virginia Squires also did that one. Randall also wrote the song Room at the Top of the Stairs. Many of you are probably familiar with that song. I know countless people have recorded that song, including Ralph Stanley, for one. I got to meet Randall myself. Uh, he came to the Ozark Folk Center in Mountain View, Arkansas. And I want to say the first time Randall was there was either 1989 or 1990. I'm not exactly sure on that date. He was there two different times, if I remember correctly. And I think pretty sure the second time was in 1991 was the last time he was there. But the first time he was there was like 89 or 90. And uh, my family and I used to play at the Folk Center back in those days regularly. And we were on the show the same night Randall Hilton was. And uh, I was uh, excited that Randall was going to be there because, again, as, as you know, one of my favorite bands as a kid uh, back in those days was the Virginia Squires. And I used to read all the liner notes on the records and all that stuff. So 
I knew who Randall Hilton was. I knew he was a, a great songwriter, and I really liked his songs. So, you know, that was a connection there. I thought, oh, I'll get to meet Randall Hilton, you know, the guy that wrote some of the songs for the Virginia Squires. He was really nice. He was really tall. Uh, Randall was six foot six inches tall. But uh, when, I, when I met him, I was probably 14 or 15. And at the time, I was still growing. So Randall was, you know, up here. I remember having to look up to him, you know. And I remember asking him how tall he was. And he said, five feet, 18 inches. So, <laughs> you know, that little different way of looking at things uh, that a songwriter has there. That was, that was pretty cool. And I remember telling Randall I, I loved his songs, and he was really nice about that. And he did he told me that uh, songwriting was hard work, that a lot of people thought it might be easy, but it was, it was hard work. And that goes along with uh, some information I read when I was looking up stuff about him online. It said that uh, this one article said that Randall said that songwriting was more of a craft than it was a gift. So in other words, it's something you develop over time. You develop that skill, you know, just like playing an instrument or whatnot. Randall usually played Gibson guitars, and he had names for all of his guitars. I know the two that he had with him at Mountain View that I remember uh, was Michelle, the blonde bombshell, <laughs> and uh, Sylvia. Sylvia was another one. They were both Gibson sloped shoulder guitars. Uh, later on, I've seen some videos on YouTube where he's playing, a, it's either, I think maybe a Gibson Dove, and he calls that guitar Henrietta. And if he had more guitars than that, I'm not familiar with those guitars or their names, but I thought that was neat that he had names for his guitars. Randall played in a finger style, more in the style of Merle Travis with his guitar playing, which went well for his one-man band kind of an act like, like Randall had. I encourage you, if you haven't, uh, if you're not familiar with Randall Hilton, there's quite a bit of uh, video material of him on YouTube. He was playing on um, a show called Access Bluegrass, and as of right now, it's available on YouTube. It's uh, three or four parts long. Uh, Randall's doing his one-man band show type of a thing. And there's several of his albums out on YouTube. Which, speaking of, of albums, of course, back at that time, uh, when I seen Randall, uh, CDs hadn't really become a big deal yet. So I bought this cassette from him that night. And this is, uh, the music starts right here. And I do have several of Randall's CDs also. But uh, Randall did sign this for me here. Show that to you there. It just says to Brad, Randall Hilton. So that was that was pretty neat there. Like I say, unfortunately, Randall uh, he passed away at the age of fifty-five. I was shocked when I heard it um, because I knew he wasn't uh, you know that old. But uh, he sure left a great legacy of of great bluegrass songs. And uh, like I say, if you haven't checked him out, check him out. I think you'll really enjoy learning about one of the most important bluegrass songwriters, I believe, of, of our time. So that's it for this video, folks. Thank you again for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Much obliged to you.